Well, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. Um, I'm just going to say it right now. I haven't really done as much prep for this because I've been distracted with uh, some other stuff going on. So fortunately, I feel like I know I can talk about this movie well enough to at least give a good review. Well, a well-executed review. I well, actually, no, screw it. This is a good movie. Um, Godzilla vs. Kong, which I think, I'm not sure how many times these guys have uh, fought on screen. There was one from the, one of those B movies from the late 60s, early 70s. So, going into this, I was kind of expecting it to be a fun monster romp. And I mean, that's the thing when you go into these movies. You, you really can't expect Shakespeare. If, if you're going to expect Shakespeare, the artsy-fartsy films are just down the hall in the theater, I guess. Or somewhere else on a uh, streaming service. and I mean, I know this movie was released in theaters, but I'm just like, why the hell would you go there in the middle of a pandemic? <laughs> no. So the plot of this movie is basically these scientists are trying to use Kong to fight off Godzilla because apparently Godzilla is now evil, even though we established he was good in the first... Whatever. Um... All in all, the visual effects are great. I mean, I you, you can, people can complain about CGI and bitch about how practical effects need to be used more often. The effects look amazing in this movie. There's a, a lot of detail. They really put a lot of effort to make sure that these models looked believable, three-dimensional, and actual living creatures. It was it was amazing. Um and unlike most Godzilla movies. You actually, well, this this was kind of a movie that you you do care a little bit about the humans, but then again, that that's that's always one thing that kind of bothers me about a lot of Godzilla films is that the, the humans are just kind of there. You don't really worry about their struggle. In this one, you do follow a little girl who is uh deaf and uses a uh, sign language with this uh biologist and. There is a lot of sweet mother esque daughter moments in there. It, it it is a very well done movie in that sense because some of the writing is really good. Um, I will say this though, I was a little surprised that Millie Bobby Brown was used sparingly in this movie because she was kind of a big focal point of the emotional drama in Godzilla King of Monsters, which. That was like 30 minutes way too long. I don't even remember that movie. I just remember she was in it, her mom was stupid, and the film was kind of boring. That's all I really remember about King of Monsters. Well, the, okay, that and the monster fights, obviously. That's that's a glowing endorsement for a movie. Well, the character was, well, we had a kid in there, and the mom was stupid, and things happened. Yeah. I mean, in this movie, the mother-daughter relationship was great. Um, I do like how they're poking fun at conspiracy theorists a little bit. But to get back to Millie Bobby Brown, sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, it does seem like she's going to be the star of the movie. But it does seem like she kind of gets tossed aside for this other this other child actress, which is that's totally fine. Because, I mean, I mean, she's got Stranger Things. She's got enough star power. So, I mean, I, I do kind of hope that she finds other work where she gets to show more range instead of just be sidekick a side character in B movie. Anyhow. Um I I think one thing I would say about the movie is that it does kind of seem like some of the storylines come up with random stuff just to keep the plot moving. And I mean, honestly, you could have cut the whole thing of the conspiracy theorist and Millie Bobby Brown's character. You could have cut their storyline out of the movie and the film would have been perfectly fine. I'm not saying it adds too much to the runtime. It just seems like an unnecessary component to a film that probably would have been very successful without that stuff in there. Um, there is a bit of a twist in this movie, which I'm not going to give away, but... It happens, it's a climactic fight twist, so you, you can look in for that. Um, as far as the Godzilla movies we've gotten since 2014, 
I liked the 2014 one because I felt like it was trying its best to be grounded and realistic, even though there's obviously a lot of things you can pick apart with that one. King of Monsters, I think I already gave you my glowing endorsement for. Um, yeah, overall, I think this is just one of those movies where I, I always say it's good, but not super noteworthy. You know, I mean, th there is a lot of fight scenes between the monsters that have a huge wow factor. The movie does try and succeed way more easily at having a heart and soul with some of the character arcs. Um, and that's really all I gotta say. It was a decent movie. It had a pretty ridiculous sci-fi premise, but for what it's worth, it was good. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to review next, but hopefully next time I'll be able to put more thought into it. I've, I've been really distracted at work and with life lately. I haven't been able to address everything I should have, but yeah, I'm not sure what I'll review next. So I'll let you guys know in the future and, uh, you'll see my next guitar cover on Earth Day. Take care.